So hello, thank you very much, Will, for your introduction and uh, thank you for your invitation. I am really happy to be here to talk to you. And uh, hello, Fritz Haller. I um, will talk to, to you about him. Uh, I had the chance to be 20 years to work to, with him together before I did some studies as, uh, in civil engineering and afterwards in architecture at Lausanne. And then I came in his office. Um, just first, sorry about, I hope you will understand me, sorry about my English, my Swiss English. If ever you have problems to understand me, just tell me so uh, I will explain to you in Swiss German. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Fritz Haller, as I knew him. Uh, he was, um, I um, would like to present you the work of Fritz Haller, but also, and maybe even more, I would like to present you Fritz Haller himself. How we were thinking, his visions, and uh, how, he was, uh, go, how he get close to the problems, how he was working. Uh, my presentation will be more or less chronologically. So uh, we begin in the year of uh, just after the war in uh, 40, 48. Haller, he went to Holland after his apprenticeship as a draughtsman. He went to Holland and uh, he worked with um, with uh, Moss in the, in, the, in the office of Moss Count, he worked there. And he saw all these damage which has been done in the war. He saw these uh, destroyed city, and uh, he realized at that time that it's not only the moment to rebuild the cities and the housings, but it's also the moment to rebuild a new and better society. A society where conflicts you can discuss, where com communication is a basic in society. And uh, of course, if you think about rebuilding a society, a society in peace, you are thinking about education and you are thinking about schools. So it, I think it's quite normal that the first project Holland did, they were all schools. So it happened that uh, when he was there, he get a call and they told him, unfortunately, that he should go home because he, is, he has won a, a competition for a school at that time. And so he went home and this is another picture from Rotterdam from his sketchbook and uh, yeah, that's a picture of the school, of the competition of the school, so I don't know if it's a good idea to show it to you, but I know that Holler would never have shown you this picture. He hated this project. He never showed it to anyone, and he never published it, because he said, you know, he still smells the Swiss uh, ethno, ethno style, you know. <laughs> you cannot do that. I, I will show it to you, but uh, just please forget it afterwards and <laughs> get it out of your mind. <laughs> So you see here, you see here these uh, elements of the school and the main element with Jim uh, Hall and of course you see al already some, some uh, topics we will discuss later in the work of Haller, these elements with, which are in a row and connected together with these kind of pergolas. Here you see another picture from the competition. You see these roofs. Swiss ethno style, and uh, you see how the building looks today. Um, when he was, came back to Switzerland, he, he founded his own office together with his father. And he was, his father, he was also uh, working in construction. He was controlling the building site. He was doing the calculations. But from the beginning, it was Haller who was the boss and it was uh, his father who was uh, employ he um, em employed his father. 
Um, already the next building uh, he did, it was all again a school. And uh, this building became, after it became an uh, example for a beginning of modern architecture in Switzerland. It's a Waskering, Waskering School in Basel. Uh, he did in the, at about uh, 54, I think. You see again here, you see these elements of, uh, of the classrooms, double story buildings. And on both sides in the middle, there are public functions and the gym hall. And you see also these elements of a uh, kind of pergola. You can walk from one building to another, and this element will, uh, will uh, define some open spaces where you can play, where you can discuss, and we think like that. You see some historic pictures, the double story buildings with the classrooms. In the middle, there are the stairway, the stairs, and you see these uh, elements of pergola. And, uh, another picture. You see here, he changed a little bit in style. You see the very cubic forms, and uh, this building now is uh, protected as an um, as example of modern architecture in Switzerland. That's a model, a uh, very new model, and uh, you see here, in, uh, in the background, you see uh, the, oh, sorry, the extension of, uh, of uh, this school. It's still a uh, Haller, oh, sorry, Haller who did it. Oh, oh. It's a uh, school, also a secondary school for a little bit older children. And now, just uh, this year, they did another competition f uh, in this area to, uh, to uh, make another stage of the school for, uh, for uh, music uh, rooms and drawings and also uh, treatment for children which have some problems. So this is a proposition of uh, our office. We try to propose something here. And uh, we proposed a structure on, uh, on pillows floating over the green uh, under the trees. It was a one-story modular structure. And uh, yeah, they decided for another project. They did now a uh, very concentrated uh, three-story building here in this part. From the beginning, Haller was thinking about furniture. Uh, there is uh, a lot of original furniture, even in this school there. And um, I will read it in, in, uh, in German. You can read it in English. Also, he said, Otto, das Schulmöbel muss wie der Schulhausbau den Bildungs- und Erziehungsmethoden angepasst werden. Kein anderes Arbeitsgerät drückt die Unterrichtsform so unmittelbar und genau aus wie der Schultisch. So, um, he was thinking about furniture. And uh, looking at this picture, you see, uh, also in other countries, it's a little bit like that. It's a picture I took uh, when I was working in Africa. In, uh, in, it's in Mali. So I was uh, working uh, together with a friend of mine in, uh, in a project where we built, where we tried to do something for education and schools. And you see here is uh, the school building. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, it's still a, s a shelter, but uh, the first thing they do is to try to uh, construct these kind of furniture so that the children don't have to sit on the ground. And afterwards, they build the school around the furniture. 
Halle did it in his way. Uh, these are the chairs. You can see still see there in the school in Basel. I will show you now some other schools. Uh, in, the, in the first part of Halle's work, there were uh, a lot of schools he did, maybe 10 or more. May, maybe the, uh, nearly every, every important work was schools. And that's another school he did in, uh, in Solothurn. And uh, here the question or the main topic was that it was a school in the city. So um, th he wanted to, uh, to uh, give a, a place for children to, to play, a playground at the ground floor. So he decided to do it, um, make the structure on, on pillars, steel pillars, and, uh, and that you can play even if it rains, because also in Switzerland normally it rains. You see it here again from the side. You also see um, this element of, uh, of uh, hall where you can enter in the classrooms and you see these elements of classroom uh, with uh, the light from both sides. You see the plants with uh, the space where you can play uh, beneath the structure. The section. And so we come to another school. Um, a school I, I, li I like a, a, a lot. It's uh, the grammar school in Baden. And uh, this school is uh, situated very beautifully. It's on the other side of the river. And uh, if you are in the old city, you can see it. And you can see it like on a little bit, on a little hill. It's, the school looks like a temple on a hill, you know. And uh, this picture, yeah, probably he did afterwards. I don't think that it was, uh, <laughs> that he saw it before. It, uh, you see it's a Greek temple. And you see here the, the grammar school uh, in Baden, a sketch from his uh, sketchbooks. We just found some weeks ago, we just found them. <laughs> you see, again, the school here with the main building in the middle. Another topic in uh, Hollis' work was uh, construction. He really loved construction. And uh, we working in his bureau, we always had to, to draw everything in the scale of one to one. Huh? He wanted to see every, every screw, everything. Yeah? And uh, he always said that construction or that it's all, all the things are equally important. Uh, screws, details, or the all over organization of the school, there is no, nothing that is not important if you are if you are doing a building. So you see here the construction plan of uh, the school in, ba in Baden. You see, oh, sorry. You see the bearing system in steel. And you see the facade. And you see here still uh, there are some elements in brick elements, some fillings between the bearing system in brick elements. And you see an example of uh, original plans, draw by hand, with the screws, how these uh, structural elements are fitted together. And here you see the plan of the building. So <coughs> there is a main building in the center. It's a four-story building with the classrooms uh, on both sides and the stair in the middle. And here you have the, the hall, and on both sides there are these elements of gym hall and laboratories. And uh, of course, you feel it here, it, you already, already thought that you can continue in this, on this side. Here you see the section with the main building in the center. And you see here, uh, during con construction, it was the first building he did 
with uh, pure steel carrying construction in steel. And you see the, the building, how it looks today, or no, how it was after construction. You see here, it's still, in some way, maybe it remembers a little bit two buildings uh, Mies van der Rohe did. You have, uh, at the ground floor, you have um, open, and uh, there is some, some um, stylish, um, you know from other architects of that time. And uh, so I think it's, impor it's in uh, interesting here to see the next building, the next school, he, did, he, con he uh, planned in the same time when this building was, was built. It was a uh, technical school of wind. If you, maybe if you compare the two, the two constructions, you see what happened. This is a building, huh? And uh, this is a pure abstract, very pure form. You don't have, uh, it's just uh, an element, a modern element uh, on the, on, in the green. Um, at that time, the main topic of this building was um, that it can be changed, that, it's, that you can adapt it to future unknown, uh, to future unknown uses because at that time uh, it was a new school, a new technical school, and the first thing the professor had to do was to uh, discuss the room, the room uh, shuttle. They don't, when he was building it, they don't knew how to use, they don't knew how it will be used. So uh, this building had to be uh, very flexible, and it was important that you can put the, the, the walls wherever you want. That's another aspect of this building. It still looks modern. You just see by the cars that it's a historic photo. Yeah. photo. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, he, date is that it's uh, 64 when it was constructed. And uh, unfortunately, it has now been destroyed uh, a little bit, uh, way quite a lot. So uh, <laughs> you better don't see it. You better see it on the pictures than in reality. Uh, there are these two columns with uh, the main building with four floors and the laboratory building with two floors and the two columns are connected together with a kind of a bridge and beneath the bridge you find uh, entrances to the building. And in the middle of the building it was this uh, hall all over the building. And uh, this was also a very important topic for Haller. These public spaces in schools, these spaces for communication and uh, for working. And uh, we never were allowed to make corridors. He always said, you have to build some spaces from where you can go to the classrooms. You see it here in the plan again, uh, in the center, this uh, open space, you have light from the top, and uh, on both sides also open space to work. And on these sides there are the laboratories and the rooms of the classrooms. Here's the laboratory building, and here you see the, the mensa where you can eat. Uh, that's the upper floor with the same structure, and the section with this uh, hall in the middle with uh, light from the top. So that's another uh, quotation of Haller. Um, he did some year later. It was, uh, it was, he wrote it for another competition for another school. And uh, he wrote that a school will not be schools anymore. They are communication hubs in a global network of relationships and data where people of any range and knowledge or social status act within their possibilities and create new values. So, Haller said, or for him it was uh, evident and it was very important, he said that uh, communication is a precondition for successful work. 
So it's, uh, it's very basic, it was very basic for him that you create spaces where communication is possible. <coughs> so here you see the structure during construction you see uh, the bearing elements and you see also these elements. These elements, it was a fault. They, they haven't thought about it. That uh, these columns, they use some additional parts to take the forces of the horizontal bearing elements. And uh, we'll talk later about it. The, they, it caused some problems these elements. And at that time also, he realized that, um, that um, making, uh, to do a, a building you can adapt, you can change the position of the walls, that's not a problem, it's, that's quite easy. Uh, if the, the carrying system, there are co columns, you can change the wall. But the main problem is, um, is uh, to change the installation systems to, uh, to the supply with the medias. And um, at that time when he built this building, he realized that uh, it was not post possible to find the right system for this problem. And um, he decided, he saw that if you want to really come forward, you have to do research on it, to think about how the system of installation could be coordinated with the system of uh, the, carrying, the carrying system. So uh, it was at that moment in, in the 60s when he started a project he, uh, he uh, followed up to the end of his life which was called Amela and he treated the coordination of the medias in a, in a building. We will talk about it later on. Here you see um, this famous, it became quite famous, this round corner, you know. Everyone thought, yeah, Haller, he invented the round corner. Mies van der Rohner, he did the negative corner, other did another corner, and Haller did the round corner. It's a, but it was not like that. He, he don't wanted to do it. It was this problem about um, the, str the structure where you see it here again. Um, they had these parts. Uh, it happened that he had to do it because the engineer said you must do it. So they didn't knew how to how to how to uh, uh, react to this problem. So they, they did the, the, these uh, elements going around it to uh, to uh, around these elements, and that's the reason this corner will be round. He just turned around the corner. So, at that time, um, Haller wrote an article in a, in a review, and uh, it became quite an important article for him. It, it was, uh, the title was about, about general solution in building, in building technique. And uh, he said that in search for solutions for buildings and tasks, the, de the, the desire emerged to find generally valid principles of order to be usable more than one time in the course of the work. So it was a question, are they in our times also general solution, like other times it was a brick wall, you know. We, you will find this kind of building all over the world. Or another example is um, these uh, teeth of wheels for mechanical problems. So he was thinking, he was thinking about if um, there will be um, solutions like that in our times. And uh, for him, the step from the original to the general solution was one of the most important topics uh, all during his life. 
to find solutions that could uh, be more than only the solution of for the moment. So, we just talked about schools now, and I think you have seen that uh, it's a kind of evolution in this school. It's a kind of an evolution of thinking about schools and of thinking also about uh, uh, structural systems. And uh, the next contact Holle had was also very important for his work. It was a contact with uh, the USM, the family of the USM factory. It was, um, it was a factory, they produced window, window equipment. And the, the um, junior boss of this uh, factory, he came to Holler and he said uh, that he would like to have a factory. And from the beginning it was uh, one of the topics that this factory you can in enlarge, enlarge in all directions, mm -hmm. and that you can change it and adapt it to, uh, to uh, different uses. So you see here, that's, uh, this is a picture of a model. You know, it's a model in wood. And they just put it on, on the place where the factory will be afterwards and took a, took a picture like that. You see this uh, model of this uh, structure. It's uh, with the four pillars. And, uh, um, sorry. And the horizontal structure, you have a span of uh, 40 meter 20. It's uh, coordinated in a model of uh, 2 meter 40. And, uh, it was the beginning of steel constructive systems. And this is a steel constructive system for one story buildings or one story factory halls with great spans. Next picture you see the construction uh, during, yes, during construction. And you see from inside. So, uh, it's a beautiful construction with, um, with uh, glass all around and also uh, the uh, light from, light from uh, the top. And the other picture you see here during, uh, during work. You see here already, I think there are, it's a picture, it's already a little bit later there are already uh, fabricating the balls for the furniture. And one thing wi which was important in the structure also, that uh, there was no direction. You can, uh, there is no uh, very <coughs> direction. So you can use it in every side. It's always the same. You can put uh, on the ceiling some elements like crans. You can introduce some elements of insulation in the in, uh, uh, in this structure here. Of course, they uh, enlarged it. In they enlarged it, I don't know, maybe 20 times, 10 times. Every two years, they did a little, uh, they changed it a little bit. And you see here, it's possible to change this structure during work without disturbing the fabrication of the elements you do in the, in the inside. You can just uh, come with these elements and uh, construct the second, the next uh, part of the building. And you can take these elements and put it on another place without, without uh, um, you can reuse re, uh, it. You see the plan, so uh, the first etape of the fabrication hall here, and you see here uh, on the side the office building, and here the possibilities to enlarge.
the section. Uh, the basement is uh, in concrete. And uh, from the basement you can supply with material and with media you supply from, from the top. From the structure you come with electric and power and so on. And you see here the picture of the first uh, stage of the construction with the factory hall and here the office building. This um, project it was uh, published in uh, architectural reviews and so on. And um, so they realized that they could sell it to other architects, to other industries. So they pr produced, uh, sorry, they pr produced this element in advance and uh, other architects have built some holes with it. So it's an example like uh, the building became the product for this company. But it's not the only one. So you see here um, the office building. This building was the first open space office building in Switzerland. You see the plan. It's a, you come, uh, you come in here. There is one open space for working. You can here it's just a little uh, for uh, you can talk if it's really private, and it's a stair to go down to the toilets. So the main problem with this building was when uh, they have built this building, beautiful building. You have a glass all around. You can see in the nature. You can work a little bit there but uh, they had no furniture and uh, they were looking for furniture and at that time in uh, 63, 64 um, they didn't found any furniture that was suitable for this building. You know these uh, Swiss furniture, there were tables and uh, you had, uh, you know, a little bit like that. <laughs> there, were, uh, there were the corpus down in wood and things like that. So they think it, it, it's not a thing to work here. So they decided to uh, do the furniture themselves because uh, where some, they had the know-how uh, from the windows with the me mechanical parts and uh, Holler, he had the ideas. So the first thing, here you see the first furniture they did. So um, the first thing they were thinking about is the question how um, work in an office is organized. So they thought in some way it's, um, it's uh, like, it's like quite similar to work in the factory. There is some materi material stocked somewhere, then you bring it to the place where you work with it, and uh, you do something with it, and you bring it back and stock it again. And they thought, uh, what is the pallet and the forklift in the factory? It could be um, these elements of baskets for the documents, and these elements of of uh, elements on wheel, you can go and take your things you, you need, you, with the wheels you go to the working place, which is free, you don't have a working place, it, it was not like that, that everyone had a working place, you just go where it's free and you work and you stock it again. So this um, organization for working was already in Switzerland uh, quite a new thing, that um, you work like that without having uh, a working place for yourself, so that you share it with other people. The other um, innovation or important part of uh, this furniture was uh, the knot. It's, um, oh, sorry. It's um, part of the moment 
where everything comes together. The tubes comes together and all the problems comes there together. And it's this specific element which will be um, important for the quality of the furniture and also for future use of the furniture. If this element is designed uh, really in a good way, it will, uh, it will carry or it will concentrate all the possibilities of future furniture in it. And um, in so far, I think it's a good example what Holler meant by, uh, by um, when he was talking about general solution. This is really the, the general solution for this problem. Maybe it's the only and the best and only solution for this problem. And um, it's also, it is not only a good solution, it's a beautiful solution. I think um, there are some aesthetic qualities here. And uh, what is also very strange, if you change here something, maybe you make it uh, a millimeter bigger or smaller, all the furniture, the aspect of all the furniture changes. So we are so sensitive on, uh, with our feelings against proportions and uh, we feel it, if it's the right thing or not. So uh, from this example, I, um, with this example I would like to, uh, to talk a little bit about um, aesthetics, or the, what was the position of Haller to, to aesthetics. He always said aesthetics, we are not looking for aesthetics. Aesthetics, it's like, it's like a gift. It's like something which happens if you are close to the real solution. And um, you see here another quotation from him. He says, uh, everyone has the potential to create works of art. I choose building in order to understand myself and everything that happens. So aesthetics also for him, or art for him, is a method to understand what happens. And it's also a method to control, to control if the solution is the right one or not. Here another quotation he, he wrote uh, much, much later. Uh, he was already very, very sick at the time and uh, I was talking with him about, uh, about uh, in German, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of a, a play with words. St Stimmen, it's a to of tuning. Uh, there is something to do with instruments, with music and there is something to do with with communication. And on the other hand, uh, there is something to do with aesthetics and if something is the right or the wrong solution. And he said at that time, it's always a question of tuning. Something fits or is out of tune. The closer we come to the point at which everything is tuned up, the more preciously we act. So here you see once again the technical solution of this uh, node. You see um, this wall, you see the screw, and you see these conic elements. Uh, you put them, you put uh, the bears and with the screw you can uh, fix them. Huh? And you can fix these uh, tubes in all six uh, directions. Here you see the different elements of the furniture. There were really only few elements, uh, really only a couple of elements with them you can build very different furniture. So it's wall, it's uh, the screw and uh, cones we were talking about. It's extremely simple, this, and uh, it's extremely stable. Huh? You, it's, there's, I don't know about that. Uh, it, it was really a problem on this uh, little space to fix the tubes. So this is uh, extremely stable to fix it. 
and you have the tube in different length. You have the filling elements, you have the drawers, you have these kind of baskets to uh, put the documents in. And with these elements, you can build up the furniture. And you see, it's um, quite interesting. You can use it from both sides, and uh, it's extremely functional. Also, for fabrication, it's, it's very easy because you can make these elements. Uh, they don't use a lot of space. You put it in a container, you bring it to Japan, they put it together, and uh, they can have it anywhere. And you can make every, you, ca you can make with them whatever you want, high or large or, and also you can change maybe uh, once you want, to, you don't want the fit, you want it a little bit uh, in another shape, you, you just can uh, put it together in another way. And there are these accessoires like wheels or uh, adjustable feet. And there are tables, very simple tables. Um, you can put them together to clusters of tables. There is an example for, uh, for the layout of this furniture. Uh, they did some layouts for other architects like Norman Forster and so on. And you can use, of course, different colors. And the other thing you see here, it was another time then. We were allowed to smoke. <laughs> we were allowed to drink. We were allowed to do many things during work, but because it was, uh, with, it was the idea of Fritz Holler that working and not working is, is a unit, you know? Working in private life is, is the same. So uh, during work, you could do anything even look TV. And uh, nevertheless, uh, at that time, they uh, did quite uh, interesting innovations, even when they smoked. Uh. And this picture shows you could use this furniture for every profession. <laughs> 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 That's a picture in uh, near, in the, it's just where I'm living, it's about five minutes where I'm living, is this little church in the forest. So, here we are about in the middle of my presentation, so I don't know, maybe you have some questions about uh, what we were talking up to now. Yeah? Is this like the motherhood of IKEA where you put your... Sorry? <laughs> Is this like the beginning of IKEA where you put all your um, So the story of this furniture, it was this, that uh, as I s told you, the beginning, they did it for themselves. Yeah. And uh, then it was the same story, they, uh, Holler, he became quite famous. They published it, uh, this uh, open space uh, office, they published it in, in, in some reviews. And the first who wanted to have this furniture, it was, uh, it was a bank in Paris and they wanted this furniture in for all their banks in Paris. And so they didn't know what to do. They ha had to do, say, a price, how much it will cost to do this furniture. So um, the story says, <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but uh, the story says that uh, the, the owner of the factory, uh, Mr. Paul Scharer, he said, yeah, this furniture is in metal, there is some some uh, parts with some uh, constructive uh, problems. It should be the same price like a car. So <laughs> they took the, the price as for a kilo of a VW, of a, of a German car. And so they said, oh, this, a kilo of this furniture will cost uh, so much. And uh, after that, it began, they began to produce this furniture. And now they, only do this furniture. It's, um, it's, uh, it's really uh, 
very, very successful. You can sell it in, uh, they sell it in Japan, America, wherever you go, you will find it. <laughs> yeah, it go. Yeah, it's it's of course it's it's not very cheap, but uh, a table like that, a table like that. Oh, sorry. A table like that, it cost about about um, two hundred pounds, three hundred pounds, something like that. And a working place like that, it maybe it would cost uh, two thousand pounds, something like that. So if you compare with other systems, it becomes rather reasonable. Huh? It's not cheap, but it's rather reasonable. And the furniture we have at in our office, it's now fifty years. You know, you, we changed it ti ten times. And uh, if you look the cost for all, um, it becomes quite interesting. Uh, so it's um, if you compare with uh, other systems like li uh, so uh, design systems, it's nowadays it's rather a reasonable price. But of course, it's not uh, it's not cheap. Huh? I continue or. So um, the collaboration with USM, it was very, very, at the beginning it was extremely good. They, uh, and it led to the evolution of this building system. As I said, the first one was a MOXIE building system, then the, um, the system for the furniture, and another system is uh, this mini building system. Uh, this one is, um, designed for two-story buildings, for houses, things like that, with spans up to eight, eight, nine meters, and with a, with a modular, modular uh, raster of uh, one meter twenty. The first one he did, he did for his brother, who had a, um, a vegetable, he, who worked with vegetables. And uh, it was um, here, do oh, here down they put the cars, and on the upper floor there were apartments for, for the workers. He just did it to test if uh, it could function. Huh? And it did it, they, they, couldn't, they could not calculate it, because uh, all engineers they said, yeah, it will, not, uh, it will not be stable enough, you know, because it was really very, um, without any screws, they, it was just put it together. And so they built it up and they came with some uh, cars and they put some ropes and they, draw, uh, they <laughs> pushed and, and looked if it really is stable enough. And it was. So you see it from the other side, you go up in, in the apartments by these little stairs and you see here is uh, plans with um, here are these elements of uh, kitchen and toilets and uh, one space for living and sleeping. Um, this system was, at the beginning, it was uh, the idea that it's for, for um, temporary buildings, for maybe for expositions or for uh, if you need some uh, shelter for a school for some years, something like that. But um, with the time, other friend came and they said they would like to have a bidding like that with the system because uh, also this system, it's not so astonishing, but uh, it had some aesthetic qualities because it was a good system. And this house he designed for the owner of the USM factory, so the factory is here, here down is the factory and he looks to the factory. And um, this, uh, you, know, you see this house, he is on pillars again. And um, yeah, you see it from the side. You can uh, put the car beneath the house and you go, you go he in here and you go up and you are on this side is the living space, you have the view to the mountains. 
and on the other side is a part where you can sleep. You also see its uh, windows all around. There is, if you are there, you have the impression that you are living in, uh, in nature. From inside. And you see another example for, uh, for uh, a woman, an, an old woman. She, she was maybe, she was already uh, <coughs> 70, 75 when, he, when she constructed it or when she uh, uh, wanted this building from Holler and she collected art. And so uh, one of the topics was that he, he uh, Holler, he could, it was really a friend of Holler, but uh, he could do what he wanted, but th she said, I need some walls because I have so many pictures. Uh, or so he had to do some walls. And um, you see here's um, the house from the side it consists of um, two elements. There is a quadactic element uh, to the street with the carport and a two-story element also. The basement is a quadrat and there it's connected with a kind of a corridor who uh, makes a kind of a courtyard here uh, in the middle. You see here the plan, the section with um, a double story room with a gallery for, uh, for, the, for the paintings and here is a carport with uh, the guest room. The old lady, she was sleeping here on the floor upstairs and you see here, uh, uh, yeah, you come here, it's a carport, you come in, there is uh, the guest room and the double story room with a stairway and the kitchen. And this uh, kind of a court of an open space. And the upper floor with the bathroom and the open space to sleep and the galleries to look the pictures. Also this system has been used for other uses and from other architect, you also could buy it. Sorry? What's the life expectancy of these? Sorry? What was the life expectancy of these buildings, like the previous one? The how life? Long? How long? Yeah, how long is it supposed to last? Yeah, if you pay attention, they, they are still there. Yeah. But uh, of what course. Are they, <laughs> are they expensive? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's, uh, of course, it's, um, they are like old timers now. I, um, we just did the, a renovation of uh, a house which, was ha which has been built in the early 70s. And uh, it was more expensive than to build another one. Huh? Mm -hmm. So uh, you have really to take care. You have to, uh, but if you, yeah, of course it, it can, uh, but it's not like uh, the f the a building, uh, a historical building. It's mm -hmm. maybe if you take care, it can be 100 years, 50 years. <laughs> but you need to to uh, always to look to uh, to look that it's there is no corros corrosion and things like that. So you see here, it was used, for instance, for uh, for uh, little shops in railway stations, or it was also used from our the architects to to build buildings. There are better ones. There are better ones. This no. Yeah. It's in the middle. <laughs> so here you see uh, in this factory of USM how they produced these elements. Um, here you see still the MOXI system, you see it, uh, it's a uh, construction, uh, conventional construction with, uh, how do you say, uh, um, frameworks. And here's another thing, it's with uh, plain, with plain uh, steel elements. And it's much more difficult to produce. You have, it's really a, a, a thing you, you make, you, you use some uh, machines to do them in the factory, so they produce these elements 
and you see here is uh, pillars with um, here these elements you can fit in the horizontal elements these one they have here the same kind of uh, thing you can put it in without screwing without and uh, so there are other elements to uh, for the facade and here you see how they uh, put it together so you don't need any crane you don't need need any screws you just put it together and uh, many of these housings or of this construction they once were a school, some year later they were somewhere an exposition and then became house. So you can really also uh, put it together, but also, uh, um, how do you say, put it apart without any um, damage and use it again. Just two men can uh, put it together in a very short time. Here you see again these uh, openings. It's again for uh, for the infrastructure, for uh, air, for uh, installation si installation systems. So here you see again the four constructed systems Huller invented. The first one is um, the MOXIE system, uh, the MINI system here, and this one is the MIDI system we will uh, talk about later. The special thing about this is this is a system for uh, multi-story buildings with high installations, so the, cons uh, the bearing system is uh, designed in a way that uh, it is, um, that installation can be uh, done uh, in an optimal, in an optimal way, because um, usually you have the problem that um, in the axis of the building you you have the walls, huh? and it's also the position where normally you come up and down with uh, with installation. So if you go down, you you have a problem that you just at this position you would like to go down with the installation there is uh, the bearing system so that's the reason he uh, doubled it uh, so that he could go up between in between and uh, the geometric design is also uh, coordinated um, with uh, position of the different medias in uh, here I don't want to go uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't, I don't want to explain it in detail here. These um, modular component systems, um, it was a result of uh, the search for principles of order within the general validity, he says. And um, he wrote about it that the buildings erected with these systems, they have special quality of use and appearance. They are variations of arrangements of the models of the general system. Such building can be modified and uh, adapt to new requirements corresponding to the change of their use. As a result, the building appearance changes. Its value is determined by the quality of the modular component system and the quality of the arrangement of the components. So, um, apart from uh, the building experience Holler did, Uh, he always did research. This was, uh, he was very interested in research. And uh, even the name of his office, it was uh, Fritz Haller Building and Research. And um, he, 
he did research about uh, the geometric coordination, about modular organization, about problems of joining, about building system, about uh, the organization of kinetic systems, about urbanism. He even thought about how it could be if uh, human, human beings cannot live anymore on this planet and have to go to space. And um, so it's not so usual that an architect makes uh, research for, for him, himself. And uh, you may ask yourself why. And one reason is, is that um, he realized, as I told you, that um, if you want to go f uh, a step forward and really go deeper in the problems, you, you can't do it during construction because you don't have the time. So you have to really uh, look the problems in uh, abstract and uh, on, on another level. And that, uh, that's, a way, that's why you have to, to uh, think a part of your project about some problems. And uh, he said that uh, his projects, they were like landmarks or like marks or prototypes on his way of uh, thinking about the world, on, on his way about uh, thinking about research. And the other thing was, uh, he always talked about, was very important for him, is curiosity. So, um, just, um, yeah, he wanted to know how this world could function. So, this was also one reason he, um, went to America. He had the chance to um, come in contact in um, 1966. You see, it all happened in the same times. These furniture systems, these schools, it's all in the, in the, in the 60s when uh, it happened. And uh, so he met uh, Waxman uh, at Lausanne. There he, Waxman did a workshop and uh, Holland met him there. And uh, afterwards, Waxman asked him to come to America, where he has been a visiting professor from 66 to 71. You see here one of his uh, pictures from uh, New York from his sketchbook, I think. It's still the World Trade Center here mm. at that time. And uh, you see here this picture. <laughs> I, it's quite a funny picture. You see these three person. At the left, Konrad Wachsmann, Charles Ziem, and Fritz Haller. So you see uh, these two Eames and Waxman, they were communicator. Uh, Eames is explaining something. Waxman always is his wise uh, cravat, uh, very cool. And uh, Haller, he is the observer. He just looks and thinks about whatever they could tell me and there. It's extremely typical <laughs> how he is looking and how uh, he is wondering and about his, his uh, curiosity, how uh, he was looking the, the world. So uh, for me, this picture is really, uh, if you look at this picture, you can understand a lot about his way of thinking. You see here another picture. He did um, some research in Los Angeles about um, joining. So uh, you see him here with a model of a structure, uh, Waxman and him. So this was a very difficult, very abstract um, research work. And uh, don't try to understand it, but because uh, it's not possible for me to, to explain it now in the time we have. and. Um, in the last year Haller lived, he was already uh, diseased with uh, Parkinson. He couldn't talk, he couldn't just sit on the table. And then we had a workshop 
and um, we, uh, we try to understand this research project. And uh, then Holler, he said, or do he, um, yeah, he said, <laughs> even he, was, he had problems to speak, but uh, he said, yeah, maybe there should be a mathemat mathematic professor to, to, uh, to take part. So we had women who was a professor in mathematics who also joined us in this uh, workshop. And every two weeks, one day, one morning, we went to Holler and uh, we discussed this, uh, this topic of um, how to put things together. And um, just now I'm still uh, to finish this work, to make the, the writing of this work. So the pictures you will see here, for example, these pictures, they are drawn now by, uh, they are pictures from this workshop. Um, you see here the four kind of four models, the, the, the work, the topic of the work of this uh, research is about, um, it's called problems of joining. And uh, he says that um, this problems of joining, this research, it addresses the essential problems in the development of building systems, the geometric coordination of the systems, modular elements, the development of their connections, the control of the flow of forces in the static system, and the securing of the space of movement, so that the elements can be brought into their planned position. So you see here the four working models. So the first one is a model with uh, tubes. In every every uh, they are in every side there is a diagonal element. The second one is a model with plates, and uh, this is a model with uh, wooden elements and a model with vectors with mathematic elements. And of course, the first one with the tube he has something to do with the structure. Uh, Voxman did at that time, it's a structure for an uh, airplane hall um, and uh, um, it has to do something with that. And the second, of course, it had to do with um, the general panel system also invented by Waxman. Um, and you see here also these elements of connection, how to put these elements together. I just will show you some pictures. This is a model of a plexi tube he did with these plates. And here you see some pictures we did about the different shapes of these models. So you see here, um, of course, there are hundreds of possible combinations. And these are some interesting combinations because they are some regular order in it. And um, I think you can imagine that uh, it has something to do, the one with another. You see some structure, some vectors. These vectors, the red one always all turns uh, right and the blue left. So there are some, some uh, order all over the different shapes of the models. And uh, at the end of our research, we checked that uh, it's like a genetic code that you can uh, say if, if something happens in one model, uh, something happened in another one. Uh, we we uh, could uh, prove it with uh, ADFO systems and he I don't know how he did it. Probably he just had the feeling about it. He felt it. So <coughs> another work of research was uh, the integral urban model. It, uh, he did in uh, Sixty-eight to seventy-five, he wrote this book. There are two books. 
a first and a second one. And it's about how could we organize very big cities with 120 millions of inhabitants in a world with a population of more than 10 million billion people. So it treats, um, it treats uh, the most important thing for him was uh, how should be um, these um, systems of communication and mobility so that you can communicate uh, with each other if there are so many people in the world. You see here a plan of uh, the communication system. Just take them as pictures. <coughs> and you see here, it was an um, advertisement for a workshop. Uh, Halle, he was professor in uh, Karlsruhe, and uh, we had a chance to participate on a workshop in, uh, in the 90, I think it was 93 or 94. So the topic of the workshop was um, kinetic systems, how to design kinetic system. So you see at the, oh, sorry, at the left, you see a chip. And uh, yeah, it's about 12 millimeters. It's very uh, little chip. Now it would be much smaller. In the middle, you see the installation plan of uh, the technically windish we saw before. And here at the right side, you see a city plan of the global integral city, which is a side of about uh, 160,000 meters. So you see there are three different scales we are talking about. And the, um, the game was, uh, they were students, yeah, maybe like that. Uh, about 50, 50 students, and we did three groups. And one group uh, did some theory and design for the chips, the other for the buildings, and the third one for uh, kinetic systems in cities. And uh, they used their own instruments. There are uh, programs and instruments for chip design. There were programs for the design of the installation in the buildings. It's uh, the Armella system in invented, and there are programs to uh, coordinate kinetic systems in cities, uh, subway systems to coordinate, uh, how do you say, the stops of the buses with the stops of the subway and so on. And after a day, you changed. Uh, the other group did the other, the other topics and so on. And we realized at the end that uh, after all, it was the same. If you design a chip, if you design a building, if you design the kinetic systems for, uh, for the cities, you could use the same programs and the same theoretical basement. So, um, I would like to show you now this um, project that began with in the 60s with the construction of the, of the Windisch technical building and uh, it, uh, he worked on it up to the day when he died. It's called Armella. And it's um, the system that's, that uh, we were talking about, uh, about kinetics in structures. So, um, Armilla is a result of research and development work over the course of more than 40 years in the office of Solothurn and at the Institut für Industrielle Bauproduktion at the University in Karlsruhe, where he was, was a professor. And in collaboration with another firm we are working together, uh, Digitales Bauen in Germany. They do some programs. The starting point was the aim to supply usable floor areas with all the necessary media over the whole surface without conflicts.
to design conduit systems with IT support, to manufacture industrially portions of conduit systems as elements of component systems. In the course of the work, Amela developed into a network of methods and aids entirely suitable for the organization of kinetic systems and functions in general. We expect, we expect to uncover further application possibilities, both in regard to the smallest building components and in urban development. So it's uh, the thing we are talking about. Um, here, you see an example we uh, did in, uh, it's called test uh, 01, it's called, uh, it was a testing project, uh, 2001, for a building, a uh, multi-story building with high installation for laboratories or things like that. So we just tried to test the operation model for the system. So you see the first thing you do is, um, you just trace the main installation system. It's, we call it the line plan. Uh, this means you uh, just um, decide how um, this is now for, uh, for the air, for uh, air conditioning. You decide where the elements, if the vertical elements are, if there is a circular organization or another, and you just put the very abstract the lines. Then the machine itself, he, uh, he looks for the right position. Uh, this is the envelope plan. So um, every, every system, so the water, air, electric, and so on, it has his uh, defined position in the system. So they are looking where you have to put it. And uh, this plan is the element plan. So it, uh, you put these elements with uh, define a function. Maybe it says here it goes in, it goes out, and then it goes down to the other level and uh, connect these, uh, these um, different medias together. And at the end, automatically, you get um, the, the, how you say, the form unit plan. It looks like a silicon chip to me. Sorry? It looks like an integrated circuit. Yeah, yeah. And this, uh, for this part, we had some, some uh, methods we, we who looked for the optimal distributions. So, with this system, we are able to, to design installation si uh, installations, uh, not only for the moment, but also design it in a way that for future use, there will be no conflicts and you can really change it easily. Um, on planning, it's fantastic. In reality, uh, we have some problems. And the problem is that um, during work, you have really be aside the, the man who makes the installations and tell him, no, you have to do it here in this position, but he always wants to go the easiest way for him. Uh, in so uh, it's very difficult to rea re really realize it in reality. And it's also difficult uh, during uh, the use of the building, uh, if there's something they change, they just take someone who makes something and then the other position are blocked. So, uh, so of course of that, uh, Amila is still a vision in reality. We never, it's difficult to, reali to realize it. And he says, of course, waiting to achieve perfect perfection is a utopian dream, but it's a beautiful dream, always seeing perfection ahead of you, hoping to reach it. So I will show you another building, just uh, the first building which has been done with this uh, 
all over component system with integrated installations. It was a training center for the Trainwell Station in Switzerland. And you see here uh, a plan who has been designed in, uh, in the 76 or something like that. Uh, still by hand, you see uh, these uh, installations of the air and so on. And next is uh, the bearing system, the MIDI bearing system. And the building during construction with the basement in uh, concrete. This uh, bearing system in steel. Of course, it got very quick to put it together. And uh, then like that. Then the question, what do you do with all these elements? Uh, you have to uh, put it somewhere, maybe like that. So you see here is uh, insulation systems um, a little bit better. So it's always like that, that you have two levels, all in one direction are on one level and all in the other direction are in the other on the other side. And uh, the ceiling, the mounting of the ceiling. And here, I think that's a, a picture holder always used for students to, to show that the, um, these elements of wall, they came to the same time when they uh, when came the elements of the furniture. So in some way, it's a part of the furniture. And it's really like that, that <coughs> in this building, um, they change it maybe every week or something like that. You just use another shape of the room, so you change it in two, three hours, you can change the position of the walls. Here you see uh, the foyer, the open space with, um, with, the, oh, oh, sorry, with the aula here beneath and uh, uh, open space in the main building. You see here again, um, the auto, you see here the building from outside, and it's an example again how uh, Holler, he, he was able to integrate his buildings in, uh, in nature. It's probably, we always said it was the reason he won this competition, but because it was a beautiful nature there, a park with high trees, and uh, these buildings, which are really huge, they are 60 <coughs> or 50 meters to 50 meters, two stories, and uh, it's, uh, there are resident buildings here with 200 uh, beds. So it was, uh, he found a form to put them into nature in a way that you have the impression that they are very small. You see it here again. Uh, from uh, the other side, it was a historic building uh, in the back, and this building, which is uh, um, a little bit in a, in, a, in a hole, so that it's very flat. From the other side, the main building, the training center, and uh, in the back, the, the restaurant. And this is another. Another, another uh, building we did um, in 96 or something like that. It's uh, a school again in Solothurn. And I just show it to show you that uh, this system, this system, it's, uh, we can use it still nowadays. It's, uh, it's a very flexible, very good system. How they put it together. And that's one of the last building Holler did. Uh, in Solothurn. And this one is uh, a building we did two years ago uh, for, again, for the training center of the SBB, of the railway station. You see here in, uh, in the back the hollow buildings, and this is a new element for, uh, uh, we constructed uh, some years ago.
So, we come to an end. You see, um, for Holler, he said, uh, building with system and Armilla, it will be a never-ending story. But, um, as I said, we come here to an end. And, uh, but I think uh, for us, who, uh, for me, who is working now, it's a kind of a new beginning. We try to, to go on. And uh, I will finish my presentation with this uh, quotation of Hollers. He said, in the beginning of every project is curiosity. The, signifi the signific significance of our world is that of a narrow path in a forest of unlimited possibilities. So we will continue going on this path Hollow showed us. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>